get to a level that you never had before in order to win a championship? Before you actually step on the court mentally, how do you prepare for that uh, potential likelihood? Mm -hmm. Uh, not to be rude, but that's what we try to stay away from. You know, we don't need to change our preparation. We are a great team. We have the confidence. We have all the tools. We have all the players. We have all the coaches. We have everything we need. And we reiterate to each other that our best is enough. Our best is enough. And so, yes, they are a great team. Yes, they need to be respected. Yes, we have to prepare for them. But we're not going to switch anything up. You know, we've watched film consistent times, consistent uh, day of the time of the day um, we eat consistently we sleep consistently we come over here at the gym consistently and so we're doing what we need to do and I think that nobody needs to play out of their mind now whenever you hit a couple shots and you start feeling good and you end up having a great day yeah that's amazing but whenever you go into the game thinking oh I need to do something that I have never done before that's when you have five turnovers that's when you go over five from three that's whenever you just don't have a good game. To have a good game, you have to keep things simple. And I think that we have all reiterated that to each other, all tournament. It's just a game. The basket is the same, three point lines the same. Nothing changes, but the environment we're in, the atmosphere we're in, uh, the ball has changed a little bit, but that's okay. We've learned from it, we've practiced from it, and it's just playing our game, preparing the consistent way. All right, we have two final questions. We'll start over here. Yes. Yeah, we don't talk every day or like really consistently, but birthdays, he's had a couple of children recently and uh, they've won a couple of big games and I've reached out to him. We've won big games, he's reached out to me. And so that's a lifelong brother. You know, we built the relationship. He was a Purdue person at one time. And if you're a Purdue person, you know, we treat everybody the same. We don't think about whether he left or if he stayed, it's not that. We build a relationship, we have that relationship. Now he's with the enemy, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Keep your friends closer, enemies closer. Um, but we love him. He's a great guy. You know, he did great things for us outside of basketball, just kind of from a mental aspect of how to think, how to go about things, how to be a professional. And that's where why he is in the position he is today. Um, you know, we'll definitely hug and talk real quick but once the game started it's at war and then right after you know we'll hug and talk again whoever wins I know that the other will congratulate the other and we have one final question right here in front Mason in 10 20 years from now if someone asks you for a Matt Painter story does a memory pop up in your head right now um people ask us that question and it's hard to answer because we have so many things that we could give you uh, it's hard to think about it on the spot, but the best memories I have has been an accumulation over the five years of him getting closer with us as players, trusting us a little bit more. Um, he's always he's been a personable guy, funny guy. I know all of you guys have talked to him. He's great to talk to, um, but you could really like feel a change in his demeanor around us, how he talks to us. Uh, he's had us over to his house more than he did three years ago. You know what I mean? He's just opened up a little bit more, and I think his trust in us, his belief in us, his communication with us has, is another piece that's what's gotten us here. You know, we follow his lead. He, he's the boss man, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that what he says goes, and we just have to continue on that.